Now, Winthrop, you have the surveys and after my letters of instruction. I'll start negotiating at once. Cable me as soon as you arrive in London. I shall follow your instructions to the letter, Sir Henry. The money shall be transferred to your account here at the Merchants Bank. I'll see the attorney, Rontel. I think I'll use his services. Very good. Cheerio. I know this syndicate back home will be mighty proud of what you've done. Thanks, Winthrop, and a very pleasant journey to you. Forward. Cheerio. I presume you are Mr. Rontel. Why, yes, but I, uh, I don't believe I've had the pleasure of making your acquaintance. I... Oh, I'm, I'm delighted to meet you, Sir Sheffield. Won't you sit down? Why, oh, yes, I thank you. You've been in this country a long time, haven't you, Mr. Rontel? Yes, quite some time. I enjoy the confidence of and take care of most of the legal matters for the ranchers in this vicinity. That, Mr. Rontel, is exactly what brings me here. You've been very highly recommended to me. Oh, thank you. I'll endeavor to live up to my recommendations. Uh, just what is your uh, trouble or difficulty? Oh, no trouble at all. Quite to the contrary. My associates in the British Continental are definitely prepared to make a very large investment here. It would seem that you are the legal link to our chain. I am at your service. We have guarded our findings very carefully. Of course, our clients must be protected at all costs. Naturally. I believe you comprehend, Mr. Rontel. Thoroughly. You may proceed in all confidence. Splendid, my dear fellow, splendid. Let me see. Ah, here. Now then, this is the district in which we are definitely interested. Now, my survey shows that along here and down to this point, community, but that's all changed. Something has got to be done. Well, that's all very well for you to say, Hayden, but how can you fight something you can't see? You're right about that. We can't go on living in fear and terror. Our neighbor, Jim Bell, shot down without a chance to defend himself. But we haven't been able to find one clue pertaining to the guilty party. Well, if this thing continues, I'm for selling out and pulling stake. It's mighty queer we can't get to the bottom of this. What's the sheriff doing? Yes, yes. what is the sheriff doing? doing? Well, come, come now, gentlemen. You're being very unfair in your criticism of the sheriff, especially since he isn't here to defend himself. I'm positive that he can be depended upon to not only enforce the law, but to bring the culprits to justice. I'm a itching to see the man that done this a hang to the end of a rope. Uh, set him up, Bill. Okay. Come on, boys. What? Take your point. Wait. 
cowboy on a lonely trail. He sings to the rhythm of his holy steed as we glide along o'er the sand. A tune about the roundup of the dobies in the spring, a song of his lonely western land. Makes you kind of homesick, don't it? Yeah. I wish I was home with Miguel. What home and what gal? None of your business. That reminds me. Are we in the business of raising and selling beef for money or excitement? Ah, well, wherever there's money, there's excitement. Say, where are we drifting to? Over to the Pecos Valley? Mm, that's all right. I got a gal over there. So maybe you'll get a home, too. Yeah, so you can move in. Sheffield, you're making it necessary for me to visit you quite often. Now, we can avoid all this if you'll do just as I say. Are you ready to sign this? I won't do it. Are you going to force me to make you sign? Looks like we got about five miles to go. When we hit the lower country, we'll try to make a deal. What do you think? What's the use of me thinking? It's what I thought. Something is wrong. Hate should have passed through here long ago. Well, what do we do? The boss has ordered us to get him. Looks like Carl knows something. Just caught sight of Hayden. He's taking the old road.
looks like trouble. Wonder who's right and who's wrong. I'm lending the old man a hand. Get the other one. Stop that gun and reach. I said reach. Do you want to talk? Do you want to keep the information for where you're going? Uh, it's kind of hard to talk when you ain't got nothing to talk about. But you seem to find words mighty easy. Somebody's going to get hurt, and I'm looking at who I mean. Where's your partner? Right here, gentlemen. another move. I don't aim to hurt nobody, but we just can't pay for another's losing. Now, if you'll talk sense and do a little explaining, maybe we can get somewhere. Hold it, stranger. All right, boys. If it wasn't for this man, I wouldn't be here. Daddy, 
are you all right? Where have you been? Why didn't you wait for me in town? Well, you told Excuse me to go Excuse me, Miss Jones. Charlie, did you send your daughter word to go to Jones's? No. Well, I knew it was a trick when she told me, so we rode over here to head you off. John, they killed Porter. Monty, look after the buckboard, will you? Yes. This man saved my life. I'm afraid in my excitement, I forgot to thank you, sir. That's all right. I'm sorry I didn't arrive sooner. And I want to thank you, too. I couldn't afford to lose Dad. What brought you up in these parts, Smith? Uh, just drifting a bunch of cattle through here. Uh, that is, uh, me and my partner. You know these men? Very well. Meet Tucson Smith. Or, uh, should I say, Two Gunsmith. And his partner, Tony Martin. My daughter, Joan. Pleased to meet you. Thank you. Staying or drifting, Smith? That all depends. On what? The price of beef. That's right, Tucson. We understand they're paying top prices around here, and uh, there's no time like the present to make a deal. How many head have you got? Mm, 510 uh, now. Oh, I guess we can make a deal all right. And if we do, are you staying or drifting? That all depends. I can make it interesting for you if you stay on. We've been having a lot of trouble. Well, uh, wherever this trouble, you usually find Tucson Smith. Mr. Hayden, uh, just how do you get to your ranch from here? Why, you... You go uh... straight down the canyon trail. You can't miss it. All right, Stoney, you better get the stock moving. Right, partner. Well, Sheriff, uh, there's uh, three of your ex-citizens lying over there in the meadows. I thought maybe the law might be interested. Well, the law sure will be. I told you never to come here in the daytime. But I had to come. They just got Foster, Peters, and Marks. What about Hayden? We got Porter, and would have gotten Hayden, but a pair of strangers cut down on us. And one of them was the best lead slinger I ever saw. Well, I was lucky to get away. Lucky for Hayden, you mean? Toro, you're riding across the border. You know where to go. Get Saunders and his men and have them back here at midnight. Yes, sir. Toro! You come back with them. Yes, sir. Boys, I'm not mentioning any names, but uh, some fellows are just naturally handsome. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon me. Dad would like you and Mr. Martin to have supper with us. Oh, thank you. Hey, are you uh, staying or drifting? I'll explain that to you later. That's what I thought. <clears throat> Mr. Hayden and his uh, most charming daughter are to be my guests for dinner tomorrow night. After a very enjoyable evening, they will be leaving for home. Oh, say about uh, 10 o'clock. There will be no mistakes this time. Do I make myself clear? We understand you. What's the matter, Taro? You better count me out on this one, Brontel. I have been most generous in my remuneration. For... That's the pay, gentlemen, for the services that I have received. 
So, Toro, if you'll just step into the other room, I'll pay you off. Well, that'll be all right with me. Help yourself, gentlemen. Tomorrow night. Well, you certainly look charming this evening, Miss Hayden. And that dress certainly radiates your lovely personality. I don't know when I've ever seen you looking quite so beautiful. Thank you, Mr. Rontel. Haven't you forgotten something, Daddy? I'm sorry. Mr. Rontel, I took the liberty of inviting these two gentlemen to supper inasmuch as they're interested in our situation. There's something we wish to discuss with you later. Meet Mr. Smith. Uh, glad to know you, sir. And Mr. Martin. Hi. It's a pleasure, gentlemen. Won't you be seated? Mr. Rontel, if you'll excuse me, I'm a kind of an observant cuss, and it seems to me I've seen a thing just like that one hanging in a place across the border. In fact, uh, just like that one. Uh, Smith, what was the name of that hangout? Uh, what he means is that you have a right nice layout. Uh, that is uh, pleasant to look at. Oh, I see. Thanks. It's a hobby of mine. Mr. Rontel, your house and ranch are so peaceful and quiet. It's a pleasure to spend the evening here. Thank you. That's right, Miss Hayden. This peaceful valley reminds me of when a fellow's riding along alone, and he beds down for a good night's sleep, when suddenly he's attacked by a pack of wolves. But a wolf is always a gentleman. He howls to let you know he's a coming. That's very true. You know, Smith and his partner were on their way here to sell me a bunch of cattle. Fortunately for me, they arrived just in time to save my life. Well, that was splendid of you, Smith. I feel that we all owe you a vote of thanks. It would be most unfortunate if we were to lose Mr. Hayden. He means so much to the success of this valley. He must mean a lot to whoever's gunning for him. I've asked Smith and his partner to go to work for me. I figured that being total strangers here, they might learn the identity of the killers. I think that's a splendid idea. They might be able to find out something. Just how did these killings occur, Mr. Hayden? I told you about that before, but here's something that I didn't tell you. The men who were killed own ranches parallel with mine. They've been after me for some time. This is the fourth open attempt to get me. They seem to learn in advance every move I make. Then somebody close to you is tipping them off. Who could that be? 
surely not one of my own men. They're all like sons to me. We've discussed that, haven't we, Mr. Rontel? Yes, from all angles. I may be a little thick, pardon me, but uh, would you mind discussing it again? Oh, well, your suspicions of Mr. Hayden's men are baseless, Mr. Smith. I think it's a waste of time. Well, maybe it is, but I've got lots of it, and I'm willing to invest a little. After Mr. Bell was killed, Rontel bought his ranch. We stationed several men there, but no further raids have occurred. And uh, I thought it might be a good idea if I purchased Mrs. Porter's ranch and placed several of our men there. That's a waste of time. What about the law? They're doing all they can. Then why not resort to the other law? What law? The law of the 45. Uh, thought me and Stoney would ride into town again today. Uh, yesterday, when I was in the four aces, I mentioned uh, sort of confidential-like to a fellow that uh, the next time we rode into town, it was coming through the new road in Pine Canyon. Now, if that reaches the right ears, we might learn something. I hope so. I'll be seeing you. Cover him on the other side. You know him? I do. Runs with that Vincent gang across the board. Now we're getting someplace. What do you got on your mind? Uh, something happened. We just told Mr. Hayden about it, and he said we should come over and tell you. What happened? Uh, we were on our way to town through Pine Canyon, and three hombres tried to drag gulch us. And? Uh, we, we left them there. You see, uh, we recognized one of them. He's a member of the Vincent gang that runs across the border. We thought we'd ride over and see what we could find out. Don't you think that's a good plan? Why, yes, yeah, splendid. But I'd be very careful. 
Oh, we'll be careful, all right. I'll wait here for you and see what you find out. Much obliged. Thanks. we found out tonight is our business. Remember that, Stoney. Say, you got enough evidence on that bird to throw down on them now. Yeah, but what is a good cowpuncher doing around now? He gathers in all the mavericks, don't he?
You wait here. I'll see the boss. I brought Joe Sanchez, and if there's a man alive who can match guns with him, I never heard of him. Good. I'll talk to him. All right. Joe, this is Mr. Rontel, the man I told you about. Como está, señor? Oh, yes. Are the uh, arrangements satisfactory, Sanchez? The deal is all right, but... But what? Who are these men I come for? Oh, you don't have to worry about that. I'll make all arrangements and point them out to you. Mm, it looks funny. Well, you're not worried or afraid, are you, Sanchez? Joe Sanchez worried? Afraid? <laughs> That's very funny. Que listo. I think, senor, it cost you double to do the job now. Well, if that's it, that's it. Gracias, senor, gracias. Que bueno. We'd better be going. Tucson. There's nobody here looking for trouble. Oh, that was just Tony's idea of an unusual entrance. <laughs> and I'm buying the drink. That's unusual. <laughs> 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 Peter, I'm Ryan. <laughs> And Sanchez headed for the border. Go after him. And if he reaches the border, I'll be looking for you.
Hola, amigo Smith. Well, that was an unusual meeting in town, Joe. Especially after our last meeting in Juarez. I thought then that we understood that you were to ride the straight and narrow. I am sorry, amigo. I do not know it is you. Or I not take the job. I never forget you saved my life last time. Then the promise you made to me in Juarez didn't mean anything. It, it does this time. I know the code of the gang you're running with, Joe. And do you expect me to believe in you again? Lo juro por la Virgen. I swear. All right. Who paid you to come after me? All right, amigo Smith. I tell you. It was... Joe! Joe! Dios mío. Perdóname. Joe. Tucson, you've got enough evidence right now for me to make an arrest. There's two things we gotta find out before we make a move. And if you'll ride with us, I think we'll come out on top. Boy, I'll ride with you to the end of the trail. What's your scheme? Give me a letter to the banker so he'll talk freely. All right, I'll do that. <clears throat> Smith just went into the bank. All right. Watch him. Well, uh, just what is it you would like to know, Mr. Smith? What's the amount of Gordon Rontel's account? His personal account is rather small. But acting with power of attorney, he has access to very large amounts. Whose power of attorney? Well, Sir Henry Sheffield's, representing British Continental. Were these funds used to purchase the Forbes Ranch? Well, now, that I am not aware of. But uh, let me explain the arrangement to you. The amounts, when and as they were remitted from England, were immediately withdrawn by Mr. Rondell uh, through Sheffield's power of attorney. Do you know where I can locate Mr. Sheffield? Well, to my knowledge, he has returned to England. Thank you, sir. Good day. Good day, sir. Uh, I'd like to ask you a few questions, if you don't mind. Why, sure, that's all right. Uh, do you remember some time back selling a ticket to an Englishman who was returning to England? Why, sure I do. But there wasn't one of them. It was two of them. And those fellas, the way they was talking, and the way they was fitted out... <laughs> well, I'm not interested in that. Uh, what I want to know is, when did they leave? Well, they didn't. That is, not the both of them. One of them left, and the other one stayed here. Well, are you sure that the other one didn't leave town later? He sure as my wife's name is Mary. They couldn't get out of here without buying a ticket for me. Thanks. Smith was at the railroad station questioning the agent. He found out Sheffield never left here. Meet me at my house. Mosey around, Stoney, and keep your eye on Rontel. We're planning a showdown. Gather up all the ranches you can and seal up this valley. And let no one in or out, especially Ron Kell. Monty! Go get the boys!
Jack Sloney. They, they shot him in the back. Where is he? I took him to the doctor. Stoney. I just stepped up on the sidewalk. This side is the hotel. They got me in the back. That's all I know. <clears throat> We're still partners, ain't we? We're still partners. He's bad hit, and it depends on his constitution and the way he'll fight to live. If that's all it takes, he'll pull through. Sherry, if it's just the same with you, I'd like to go alone. All right, boy. Come on, Bill. This man's getting too smart. I've got a new plan, and I want you to listen and follow it carefully. Now, this is what we're going to do. The Smith is coming! Smith! Cover every point in the house. Unlock the door, and he'll come inside. It'll be much easier then. You turn around, don't have that gun. You've got another one in your pocket that you made a mistake with. Drop it. I give you 15 seconds to tell me where Sheffield is. All right. You'll win. Hey, Tommy! 
They've got Stoney. Rontel is the man. Rontel? Yes. Smith is going to take him alone. Mr. Sheffield, if you'll tell me why you were put here, I can clear up things mighty quick. I'm a geologist representing a British concern, sent here to make an investment. I employed this man, Ron Tell, to represent us in the transaction. When he learned what we wanted, he violated his trust, and this is the result. He forced me to turn over my concern's money to use in his deviltry. Then you wanted the ranch of Hayden and the properties adjoining. That's right. Why? I discovered oil. You were pretty ambitious. You wanted that oil for yourself. You terrorized the community. Stopping at nothing. As the Good Samaritan bought up the ranches of your victims. When your plan was completed, as far as Sheffield was concerned, dead men tell no tales. Brontel, there are two laws. One, you don't respect. The other, the law of the 45s. I know what's worrying you. You're wondering just who Smith is and what he is on account of Jones. Well, five years ago, the outlaws framed and killed his father, and he died in the boy's arms. From that night on, he's been a terror to every outlaw that crossed his path. I guess you and me need a little fixing up. I guess we'll be drifting pretty soon. Yeah. You know, Tucson, all my life I've wanted to play Santa Claus. Santa Claus? Yeah. By the way, how is Miss Hayden? <laughs> I knew that I'd get you. Yeah. 